Hello everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to run through the conversations that I had in our Chatting with NPC series with David. Now in the information leading up to the release of Farming Simulator 25, David was portrayed as maybe a little bit of a creepy character. And I have to say while the conversation that was mentioned in the blog post wasn't really a topic of conversation that came up in my conversations with him, I think more or less he's just misunderstood. Without further ado, my year with David. Hey there, neighbor. If it is not nice to meet you, I don't know what is. I'm David. Call me Dave if you want to. Don't have to. I'm happy with either. Nice to meet you. I just moved in. Welcome to the neighborhood. Saw you moving in the other day. I'm new here too. I came here almost two years ago, so I'm still a newbie in the eyes of the town folk, and probably will be for a long time. Especially since I don't have a farming background and came from the city. Did something completely different before. What brings you here, buddy? I'm taking over the family business for my grandfather. Pops is your grandpa? Awesome! I love him. I think we're going to be on good terms, friend. Let's talk some more and get to know each other when you're settled in. I bet we can help each other out here and there. I'll definitely tell you about all the mistakes I made so far. Hoping you don't hear about them from the others first, if it's not too late. But more importantly, so you don't make the same mistakes. Let your grandpa be disappointed in me instead of you. Also, you want to avoid tauntingly being stared at by our local lumberjack, Noah. I swear his sharp stare while shaking his head can fell a tree. So, feel free to come by and chat me up anytime, buddy. I'll take some time for you. If I don't, I'm busy. But that doesn't mean I don't love you anymore. Got it? Already do. Um, sure, friend. See ya. Hey, buddy. Nice to see you. Any advice for me, buddy? Have you thought about securing yourself some steady income? There are some good options that neither require a lot of investment nor attention. Wind turbines, for example, generate some nice passive income. I haven't built any myself, but you might want to check that out. If you can afford it, go for it. They'll be profitable in no time. You can do what you do while they just earn you the funds to invest in some new machinery to play with. Awesome, right? Any more advice for me, buddy? Can we continue another time, buddy? Uh, tell me about yourself, David. Sure, I'll gladly talk about myself, neighborino. Know what I really enjoy about living in the country? Boredom. What? Being bored is no fun. Beware. That depends on the definition of boredom. Here's the thing. Being bored can be bad, but it can also be good. I don't mean being lazy and complaining about it, mind you. Sure, just having nothing to do and not knowing what to do with yourself, frustrating. Back in the city, my job required me to check emails constantly. Everyone texted all the time. And my brother crashed at my place almost every day. I definitely wasn't bored. Instead, I was stressed. And I was conditioned to fill any downtime with something else. Mostly playing around on the phone, binging TV shows, or listening to podcasts. Constant noise. No time to wind down. When I got the time and distance to turn everything off and enjoy the silence, I remembered what boredom was like or could be. And I noticed that you don't need to act, think, work, or do whatever all the time. Suddenly, I got creative thoughts, dude, and I thought some things through while watching clouds. Tell me, buddy, could you use some more boredom in your life? Be honest. Yeah, I guess I could. Then you should look for some boredom. I mean, everybody's different, right? Some need it, some don't. 
In the end, everybody has to find their own way to deal with stress, noise, and balance. <laughs> anyway, not that our discussion is boring or anything, but I gotta go. Talk to you later, alright? What's going on with you? Actually, I've got a story for you that'll entertain you. Man, I really messed up again. Of course it happens to me, who else? Okay, to be fair, the victim of my mistake was another farmer in a town nearby that your grandpa introduced me to. Your pops asked me if I could help this guy out a bit. Easy job, just some leisurely plowing in the afternoon. What could go wrong, right? What did you do? Well, I was meant to plow the field where he planted oilseed radish as a catch crop. He wanted to prepare the field for whatever he wanted to cultivate next. You know, using catch crops in between your regular crops and then plowing it into the ground helps to supply the soil with nutrients, moisture, and so on. But did you know that oilseed radish and the early growing stages of potatoes look quite similar? Do they, though? They look quite different. Well, yeah. A professional person would have spotted the difference, I guess. So, I arrived at his farm, we introduced ourselves, and then he handed me his tractor and plow with some direction. Leaving the farm, go left, follow the road, and plow the second field on the right. So far, so good, I thought. But, you see, suffering from left and right disorientation makes me confused sometimes. I destroyed his potatoes. Let's just call it how it is. Got on the wrong field. Well, not all of them. He drove by, noticed it, and ran straight in front of my tractor to stop me. He wasn't happy. Now... I gotta help him more often to compensate. And I'm pretty sure the binoculars he wore around his neck the last time we met are used to check up on me from a distance. Anyway, I need to leave soon to help him with his bees this time. Apparently, he likes helping hands, but only got one beekeeper outfit, though. He told me this while smirking. See you later, then. I need to go. hey -o, neighborino! Any advice for me? Chat again tomorrow? I gotta go into standby mode now. Tell me about yourself. Man, I'd love to chat more, but I still got stuff on my to-do list. What's going on with you? Can we continue another time, buddy? I need to go. What can I do for you, buddy? Any advice for me, buddy? Know what mistake I made in the beginning? I sold the harvest from the fields right away. Sure, you can do that. Sometimes money now may be better than money later. But what if you can get more money later? Keep an eye on the price fluctuations and make sure you have storage space for your produce. Silos, bunkers, sheds. Sell your crops when demand and prices are high. Unless you're impatient and can afford it. Any advice for me, buddy? Chat again tomorrow? I gotta go into standby mode now. Tell me about yourself, David. Nice that you ask about me, buddy. Man, I've been living here for two years now. Time flies by. But I gotta tell you, when I moved here from the city, acclimating wasn't easy at first. Don't know how you feel, but for me, it was kind of... disorienting, you know? I know what you mean. It's a lot at first. I obviously knew that changing my way of life would be challenging. I mean... You can't just change everything in your life, move to a whole new environment, and expect everything to be peachy from the start. Suddenly, all the noise of the city is gone, there are fewer people, everything is farther apart, and you can't live by your old routines. I felt like I stepped into a vacuum and floated around, not knowing where the handles are to grab onto something, you know? I really struggled with that. I didn't know the people. 
I didn't know where to go and what to do with myself after I finished work for the day. And I didn't want to bother the locals, you know? Everyone has their own life, their own habits, their own problems. They don't need a newbie to get on their nerves, do they? And then your grandfather knocked on the door to check in. What a guy. He gave me some tips. What to do first, how to fill the gaps in my day, how to enjoy my new environment, and how to approach the townsfolk. I can tell you more about my experiences another time. Maybe we even share some. Nice talking to you, buddy. What's going on with you? Funny you should ask. Have you noticed how fast weeds can appear in your field? I have to be honest, I'm still lacking the eye for detail for many things in farming. Nah, not detail. I'm just careless, let's call it how it is. I thought I'd have enough time to get out the weeder to get rid of the weeds the good old mechanical way. Sometimes, I let myself distract myself from things I prefer to do compared to what I actually should do. Don't do that, buddy. Take care of things immediately. Weeds, in particular. A couple of days later, your grandpa even noticed them from afar and called me out on my laziness. He was right, of course. No argument here. Being the great guy that he is, he talked to a friend of his and he lent me his field sprayer. Didn't even want something in return. Just said, we'd probably meet again. Those farmer folk are nice, aren't they? They're always helping out. So, once again, your grandpa saved me from my laziness and my mistakes. There have been more since I've lived here. If you want to hear more of my little misdeeds, I think I can make you happy. Another time, though. Tell me more about yourself. Chat again tomorrow? I gotta go into standby mode now. What's going on with you? Man, I'd love to chat more, but I still got stuff on my to-do list. I need to go. What can I do for you, buddy? Any advice for me? Know what mistake I made in the beginning? I sold the harvest from the fields right away. Tell me about yourself. Alright, let's dive into the past of your good old friend, David. I wanted to ask you something. Tell me, buddy, why did you become a farmer? Because of family. Ha! The classic route. A traditionalist, aren't you? I didn't even think of becoming a farmer until I tried some virtual farming. Even then, it was just a relaxing game to me. You know what I wanted to be when I was a kid? An astronaut? I mean, I was interested in space. But watching those documentaries was so relaxing, they always put me to sleep. And I wouldn't want to miss the space flight because I dozed off. I wanted to become an actor. <laughs> and you know what? There's actually stuff from me you can watch. Mostly TV spots, though. Becoming an actor is hard, and I could have gone down that route with more dedication. And time. Or money. But you know how life works sometimes. I needed a reliable job. Lost my focus on what I initially wanted to do, and then found out it wasn't even my dream anymore. Neither was my office job. I felt trapped in it. But it earned me good money when my original plans didn't pan out. But money isn't everything, of course. When I realized I was still acting in a way, and I mean doing something that's not me for a living, I quit. Risky, but freeing, and in the end, rewarding. Now I'm here. And I'm happy. Tiny me wouldn't have imagined it. Funny, huh? Anyway, nice to talk about it. I do enjoy our dialogues more than those I performed on stage when I did theater. Already looking forward to next time, buddy. What's going on with you? Funny you should ask. Have you ever had runaway bales? Oh, I hate when that happens. I had some bales running down a hill, I gotta admit. It was especially embarrassing because I was helping out our best animal farmer around, Katie. So, yeah. She showed me how to use the baler after she asked around town who could help her out a bit. 
It was a lot of fun. Really, bailing is one of the most fun activities, I think, and I'd help her out again anytime she asks. Not really sure if she'd ask me to help her again, though. I thought I had everything under control, and since bailing is so satisfyingly relaxing, I might have spaced out a bit while the bail press was doing its job. One after another, most of the bales that were ejected from the machine rolled downhill because... Well, I forgot about the bale turner. In case you're not familiar, some bale presses have those bale turner thingies, which flip the bale onto their flat sides so they don't roll away. Well, her face was... She wasn't mad. I think it was a mix of being shocked and amused at the same time. After apologizing for like 20 minutes, she celebrated the way she educated me on the bale press again, and then asked me if I could collect them. I did. So, everything's fine. Still, won't forget that. She won't let me. What's going on with you? Sorry, I can't right now. Let's chat tomorrow, yeah? Sorry, I can't right now. Let's chat tomorrow, yeah? Hey there, what's up? Any advice for me? Bees, buddy. Bees. Really, you should keep some. And I'll tell you why. First, bees are awesome. Second, honey is delicious. Third, they're easy to keep here. Fourth, they increase the yield of certain crops like potatoes, sunflowers, and canola. And finally, they're profitable. Do I need to create more... buzz? Thought so. Get him. Tell me more about yourself. About me, okay. Let's see... What's your favorite smell? Uh, that's a weird question. Okay, not to confuse you with the question. I'll explain, buddy. Every morning, after waking up and opening the window, I'm reminded how nice it smells out here in the country. But what I noticed in particular, even when I was still living in the city, I forgot how fresh produce could smell. Maybe you can relate. When you buy stuff in your regular supermarket and you enter the area with all the fruits and vegetables, do you smell what's in front of you? I don't know. Try to pay attention next time. I'd like to know. I really noticed it the first time when walking down the farmer's market in my old city. We had one right in the center of the city where regional farmers sold their produce. I walked through the market every morning on my way to the train station to commute for work. First, I was hit with freshly harvested vegetables. Tomatoes, carrots, beets, potatoes. They still emitted that earthy scent of fresh soil. Then, I thought I was standing in a field of wild strawberries. Lemons, oranges, and all those citrus aromas. It got aromatic and spicy with various herbs. Basil, mint, cilantro, rosemary. Immediately wanted to start cooking dinner before breakfast. The last stalls at the end of the market saw me off with some fancy floral notes. Luring in some sweet grandmas to buy gardenias and petunias for their balcony. Awesome start in the morning, but shopping in the supermarket after work was rather disappointing in comparison. Sure, there are reasons for that. Growing practices so we can feed the population with huge amounts of food, for example. I then learned that produce for mass markets is often harvested before it is fully ripe to withstand transportation and storage, for example. Refrigeration, humidity control, long periods of storage, and so on, that all of these can affect the flavor and what you can taste and smell. Never thought about that when I was still your common city boy, but I know now, and I appreciate what I harvest with my own hands even more now. Speaking of, I gotta start cooking soon. Katie is coming over and I want to be a good host. Tell me more about yourself. Can we continue another time, buddy? What's going on with you? Oh, there's lots going on, buddy. Of all the things I've done since I moved here and started farming, 
One thing probably stood out the most. According to your grandpa, it was the first time in over two decades an unscheduled town hall meeting was held due to a complaint. The last time that happened, your great uncle seemed to be the culprit and the reason the townsfolk were summoned. Did he tell you the story of your great uncle and how he wanted to excavate his little plot of land he owned to start a fish hatchery? Apparently, goldfish only was the plan. But I digress, even though a goldfish farm might be the better story. Anyway, I appeared to be very clumsy with plows, it turns out. But I think every other incident got way less dramatic compared to me accidentally plowing a new road. How did you do that? You know you can create whole new fields with a plow, right? Tip number one. If you don't want to do that, you should never lower it anywhere else except on the field where you want to plow. Tip number two. If you are one to find the rattling in the cabin of a tractor soothing, never put it on autopilot while you're at risk of falling asleep. I plowed a bit too far, connected two fields, one of them wasn't mine, and basically created a road between them. How did people react? I haven't looked at that many disappointed faces since I came back with a bad test result in elementary school to confess to my parents. But believe me, I was good at school, except for math. Still, your grandpa's face reminds me of that. Well, grass grew over the matter, literally, so everything's fine now and the other farmer forgave me after I helped him out here and there. But yeah, that's the story. Chat again tomorrow? I gotta go into standby mode now. Hey, oh, neighborino! Any advice? Are you repairing your machines regularly? You should, buddy. Don't wait until it's too late. If you repair your machines, especially tractors and harvesters, more frequently, you save money long term. Compared to only repairing them when it becomes absolutely necessary, mind you. I learned that the hard way with my first tractor. You don't want to make the same beginner's mistakes as me, I promise. But your grandpa will probably make sure you don't. And in case he doesn't, I will. Your buddy. Go on now, check the status of your machines, will you? Tell me about, about yourself. me, okay. Let's see. Listen, buddy. I've been thinking about something lately and would like your perspective on it. Coming from the city and living here for a good while now, I realized a lot of things. One of them is this thing about how to look at your neighbors. Some people always say that, in the city, you're anonymous, one of many, without knowing your neighbors. Makes it sound lonely and sad. The others say, in the country, you can't even sneeze without everyone knowing about it. What do you think about it? Sounds right. Hmm, I'm not so sure. But here's my perspective. There's probably a bit of truth to both. Things are seldom only one of two things, are they? It's not like we're operating on ones and zeros. <laughs> in my experience, you have more privacy in the city looking at the number of people you know in relation to the people who live there. That's math. Still, I had good relations with my direct neighbors, knew their names, knew their stories, knew their plans in life, and wasn't surprised when they moved and got children. But outside the building, I only knew friends and colleagues. The nice lady from the store at the corner, too. But that was it. Here, in this awesome little community, I know all the names by now. Even people whose houses I can't even see. But it's not thousands of people either, so... I guess, in the end, it really depends on you. I could have hidden in my city apartment without ever talking to the neighbors. But I like talking to people, and getting to know them. Guess that's helpful anywhere. Never thought about that. Let's just say, wherever you live, be kind to your neighbors, right? <laughs> Not to be rude, but don't you have things to accomplish? Nice chat, buddy. What's going on with you? Oh, I've got an anecdote you might like. 
Have you noticed how fast weeds can appear in your field? I have to be honest, I'm still lacking the eye for detail for many things in farming. Nah, not detail. I'm just careless, let's call it how it is. I thought I'd have enough time to get out the weeder to get rid of the weeds the good old mechanical way. Sometimes, I let myself dist take care of things immediately. We he didn't even want something in return. Just said, Sure, I know how it goes. And I'm not owing just one to the people around here. So, once again, your grand... There have been more since I've lived here. If you want to hear more of my little misdeeds, I think I can make you happy. Another time, though. Actually, I've got a story for you that'll entertain you. I think I did something stupid. No, wait. I know I did something stupid. Do you use narrow tires on your vehicles? Of course. Of course you do. I was fertilizing my crops after they already passed their initial growing stages. And, yes, in my defense, driving over crops and destroying them in the process was already something I kept in mind. I just didn't know I could just get special narrow tires, slap them on real quick if needed, and then spare a lot of crops. The field was way less green after I was done. Probably would have been better if I'd not fertilized at all like this. Your grandpa was driving by. I was wondering why he was shaking his head in the car. I got why after I got out of the tractor to look at my work. But I swear, it's like he always appears just in time as if it was destiny or written in a script. Just so he can observe and tell the tale of my shame. I deserve it though. And if you must know, there is more where that came from. Man, I'd love to chat more, but I still got stuff on my to-do list. What can I do, 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 do for you? You might be laughing at me, and I deserve it, okay? When I thought about mulching before I started farming, all I could think of was this bark mulch that my aunt uses to make her rhododendron beds look fancy. Then I learned that mulching is an important agricultural technique for improving the soil around all kinds of plants. Anyway, best way to do it? Attach a mulcher in the front of the tractor, while you're cultivating. <laughs> Some farming action on both sides of the tractor, you know? Not only do you improve the yield of your next harvest, you even do two field steps in one. Mulching, buddy. Do it. Okay, here's something you might want to know about me. Answer me this. What do you think about silence, buddy? Okay, let me explain. Usually, you don't experience complete silence, of course. We're not living in a vacuum or a simulation where you can turn off all sounds. I mean, silence from everything that's not natural or just wants your attention. Before I came here to the countryside, I forgot how calm and quiet things could be. With all that constant noise, it was almost impossible to enjoy silence without noise-canceling headphones. In town, there's always something. People, cars, trucks, sirens, phones ringing, and whatever. Out here? Sure, farms in nature are not vacuums either, but still, it's so calm and quiet. Even if just lying down on the grass, listening to a combine harvester of your neighbors in the distance seems quiet compared to the city. Listening to nature and enjoying the absence of everything else. Wonderful, isn't it? Do you take the time to appreciate it sometimes if you're not too busy? Go on, try it if you can. And know what? Back when I lived in the city, I should have visited the countryside a bit more often. Even just a walk in the forest, only with the sounds of nature would have helped me to feel calmer, I guess. Just because of the ambiance and all the sounds of nature. <laughs> now let's get silent and appreciated for a moment, yeah? Talk later, buddy. 
Funny you should ask. Have you ever had runaway bales? Hey, buddy. Nice to see you. Psst. I'll let you in on a secret. It's not a secret. Far from it. Just wanted to make it sound cool. You know the dealership offers used machines too, right? Buying something brand new and shiny is tempting, I know. But does it have to be new, though? It doesn't, right? You might want to keep a close eye on the sales situation. You can really get some awesome deals. I'm not a professional farmer anyway, so my requirements are a bit different from the others around here. Still, I made a good deal on a rather fancy machine here and there that I wouldn't have been able to afford at the time. Just need to have some luck on the current items and be quick. Scoring a good deal when you see it can be just as rewarding as a brand new purchase. Check it out! Okay, let me share something with you. Let me ask you something. Have you ever pondered the nature of reality? Yeah, that's a loaded question, but stay with me. What if our existence is but a construct within some vast, incomprehensible simulation? Just imagine it. I'm waiting. Did you imagine it? Imagine every thought, every action, just programmed like characters in a game. <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm crazy. I'm not. I just like the exercise of thinking about it. Didn't study philosophy for a semester without a reason. You see, if you wanted to see it like that, there are signs, subtle hints that could lead into the possibility. Probably not, but let's indulge because why not, right? Take the classic example. The déjà vu, as if you've lived through a moment before. Couldn't that just be a glitch? Or a reload? And I know, I know, there are rational scientific explanations or plausible theories for some unanswered questions at least, and we're probably not in a simulation. Let's just say we were just characters in a farming simulation game, and we knew of it. I don't know if I would want to be just a number of ones and zeros. Why would anything matter then, you know? Maybe the answer is like Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. But you might see it completely differently, of course. What do you think? How would you feel being just a character in a game or something? I see. Why don't you think about it some more when you got the headspace for it? Let's get back to existing and doing what we're doing. Love talking to you, buddy. See ya. Oh, I've got an anecdote you might like. Here's some advice on the basis of me being careless again. Put your bales in storage. Sure, you can leave them on the field for a while, but as you might have noticed, it can get quite stormy around here. Hail is raining down on us, too, once in a while. That's why you should check the weather report frequently. Last time a twister was announced, I thought I could just stay in bed and binge some of my favorite series on farming flicks. The one where this old dude starts a farm and causes chaos with his big tractor? He's like me! Well, almost. He's successful. You know that show? Good for you not wasting as much time as me. So, when all the other farmers were running around doing stuff to prepare, I did not think very much of it. I don't own animals like Katie, and she brought their livestock to safety in an instant. Didn't even need any help. But I did, in fact, forget the bales I had lying around under the open sky. Wasn't much left of them after the twister was done. Adding insult to injury, it started to hail when I stood there observing the leftovers of my bales. Big chunks, too. It hurt. Noah walked by and just stared at me, shaking his head. He was holding some kind of massive wooden umbrella over his head. Did not care about the hail at all. And that was the day I learned that you should have enough storage options on your farm. And now, I'ma check the weather report. See ya!
Came to chat? Nice. Tell me, do you mark your ridges, buddy? Those ridge marker thingies on planters and cedars, you know? To plow a line in the ground? <laughs> not everyone's doing it. Real pros might not need it, I guess. For me, it's really helpful to activate the markers, though. Maybe I'm just not good at driving straight lines. Yeah, that's probably it. But, with the markings in the soil, I can align my tractor better. You just need to center your tractor over previously plowed lines. If you're having trouble with it too, try it, buddy! Oh, me? Well, sure! So, um, you know Katie, right? Our local animal farmer? What do you think of her, if I may ask? Right? It would be hard to dislike her. She has some funny stories to tell, with all that traveling that she did before she took over the farm of her family. She's also very knowledgeable about a lot of things. Animal husbandry, of course. If you need help with that, she's your go-to gal. The reason I ask is that I would like some advice. You know, we talk a lot, and I have helped her out here and there. If we overlook that one particular hay bale incident, I may have been of actual help in at least some things. Still need to feed her buffaloes later, but I wasn't able to get into the pasture earlier today. Weird locks they install around animals. Anyway, in return for lending her a hand once in a while, she taught me how to keep chickens, because I'm thinking of getting some. After harvesting my own wheat and collecting eggs from my own chicken coop, I'll be one step closer to baking a cake using only ingredients from my farm. And I will definitely bake a cake for Katie to thank her for all the help. We're drinking tea sometimes and discussing work stuff, mostly. Since her field is all about animals, she shares a lot of anecdotes. Doesn't really feel like we're talking about work when she tells me some work and travel stories. But tell me, do you think I should ask her out sometime? I think I will do it. I'm just anxious to make another mistake with her animals and that she will send Noah after me. He already laughed at me weirdly when I was trying to get into the pasture and failed. He also seems to be quite protective of her and the other people around town. Well, thanks for listening and your opinion. Actually, I've got a story for you that'll entertain you. I just learned that cows tend to eat up grass pretty fast and basically mow your fields and meadows. Did you know that? It always looks so calm and relaxed when they're grazing. Just like me when I'm laying in the grass, just existing and relaxing. Didn't expect them to chew on that grass like machines and eat up all the grass like crazy. Katie needed to split up the cattle for some fence repairs after that twister hit the farm recently. I offered that some cows and buffaloes could chill in my tiny pasture that came with the farm. I use it mainly to chill out myself. Oh, the hours I slept in the grass, watching clouds and the shapes they form to think about whether they're real or not. I also call the field my breakfast haven, where I enjoy a cup of coffee and some self-made bread rolls in the morning. But did you know that those dairy cows can feed on, like, 10 to 20 kilograms per day? It didn't take them two hours to eat up my breakfast spot. Not that I mind. I'm glad to help Katie and her cows, but I'll probably enjoy breakfast at home and lay on the couch instead. Oh, I know. I'll get some coaching from Katie about animal husbandry soon. In any case, I'll get back to doing something productive now. You should too, buddy. Don't let me keep you with my silliness. Oh, there's lots going on, buddy. I admit that I like to sleep in. I admit that I tend to be lazy when I shouldn't be. And I admit that, due to my ignorance, I wasted a harvest. Your grandpa is absolutely right to rub it in my face like he's been doing for months now. I did not. I thought I could use a sunny Sunday to sleep in, have a nice quiet breakfast, then sleep some more and take care of the harvesting on Monday. You see, 
On Monday, I felt like I got a bit of a cold. Didn't want to take any chances. Maybe I should have checked the weather report. Next day, it was raining. The day after, too. And the one after that. And so on. Turns out, if you really have some tough luck and don't plan ahead, well... I wasted time, I couldn't harvest in time after it stopped raining, temperatures fell with each day, and that was it. Good thing it was only a tiny plot and my livelihood didn't depend on it. But I swear, that will not happen again. Your grandpa will probably make sure of it and remind me until the end of times. Now, you and your grandpa have something you can make fun of together, right? You're welcome.